Hello everyone. Welcome to the next session on SQL queries, and we are learning with Dekeler. In this, we are also talking about some special part of SQL queries, which is related to GUID. So, what is GUID? GUID is a global unit identifier. It's a 16-bit bit, or sorry, 16-byte binary, and it is global across system, databases, and tables. And the data type in SQL for GUID is unique identifier. Now, if you want to create some tables with the SQL queries, you can use the unique identifier in this pattern. So you, I'm saying log ID is unique identifier, which can be used as the primary key as well. But I'm not using it as a primary key, but I'm saying it, it should be not null. The other way that you can use is you can also create tables using GUI. So I'll be showing that in the demo. Then there are two different ways to auto generate the GUID in the SQL server. And those two ways are new ID and new sequential ID. So the difference is new ID will be giving you random GUID, but new sequential ID generates the GUID in a sequence. So I've given you both the examples and I'll be showing you that in the demo as well. So with that kind of introduction, let's just move over to the, uh, to the demo. So in the demo, I have already created certain things. So again, I'm using the same database that we have, which is Diffkiller on a DB, and in that I am creating some tables. Although for my own reference, I had created some tables related to the, the GUID, but I'll be creating three more tables for you. One is message from machines. So we are going to unlock the ID and the unique identifier with new uh, uh, new ID, which will be generating the new ID. So I will run this and create a table called message from machine. So you can see it here that if i refresh the tables part we will have a new table there which is talking about message from machine so message from machine if it is not there let me just refresh it one more time my database and then i should be able to see it mm -hmm. oh okay my fault because i did not create it in this database i created in the master database so once again i'll just Remove the database from Heritage Key Learner and I'll try to execute it. And let's just try to refresh the tables and it should be here. Here is the table. But since we have created in the master table server, so let's very quickly remove it from the master database as well. So from the master database, I will go there and I will delete it. That's going to delete the table. So I'll click on OK and and execute so that's how it deletes the table as well so very quickly let's come back so we have this table being created at the moment it doesn't have any value you can see it from here uh, okay let's see it from here that's the query so if i run it that should return me nothing because there is no value so i will execute this command these commands by uncommenting them and execute it so that will add four rows one oh, sorry five rows into it and when i'll run the command again new you will see that it has the GUID automatically generated for you with the device names so here is the example i'm just running the device name but it is automatically generating the GUID, and they are not in sequence now uh another one is i'm taking an example of creating it in sequence but before i do that let's just create the table in the format that is let's create the table from the GUID. So I'll do a right click on the tables and I'll say create a new table and I will name it. Let's just put in the column name. So I say log ID and the data type here is unique identifier. So I'll say unique identifier and it's not null. And then uh, I'll go there and the default value. Mm, the default or binding value. So here um, I will write down new ID. 
to the bracket and then I'll write down the message and that would be where can uh, let's take it max so to so let's show that it can take any value and I will just try to save it the moment I try to save it it will ask me for the table name so I'll write down the table name as uh, error log from machines and I will just copy this because I'll be recording this and click on OK. So this will create another table and if I refresh it I should have that table here. So we just created error log from machines. I'll close this and I will go back here and similarly I'll I'll just keep the table name here. Pick up the complete statements and put it here. And then update the query according to the table name. So this will be giving me the values. At the moment it will not it should not have any value, it should be empty. And then I have to update the queries giving it the correct table name. Don't worry about the red lines. The red lines is because the system has not been updated or this part <clears throat> of query has not been updated and it is not known what uh, values we have. So then uh, this is error log for machine. So let's just go there. And the column we have is message. So I will put it here as message. uh it's telling me that it's a keyword so in order to avoid it i'll be putting a square bracket here and then i will copy these and paste it multiple number of times so once i've done this i will just execute the statement of insert and you will see that it shows that five rows are impacted. And if I go here and run it, this will create another set of GOID. So this is how you can create the table for using the GOI interface. Now, very quickly, let's just talk about the sequential one as well. So this is the other table. I will uncomment it in this, which we are creating with the sequential, new sequential ID. So I will execute. This table gets completed successfully or created successfully. Then, when, then I will go with for the commands to insert the value. But before I take you to the insert, let's just run this to see that it is empty. Come here. Uh, uncommented and executed. So this will again Im import five rows. And when I execute it, you can see it's in sequence 45 55 65 75 85 rest all the numbers are the same so this is how you can create these sequential numbers as well but i'm not very sure why sequential numbers are very important because guid has to be random and it has to be uh, coming from different devices or different tables so that it is not matched together uh, so if we have like in a system we have 18 server and we have only one uh database and we want to identify or we want to uniquely identify the information coming from each server we can pay we can be based on the guid of those servers uh having the primary key in, uh, based on uh in fact we can have the data coming from various different uh, data servers on different machines and each one will be having a separate guid and when we are merging them together we can still have it in the same table in which we have stated that uh, it should have a unique value property. So with that, uh, I come to the end of this session as well. So just before we leave, let me just talk about the part that we were talking about. So we talked about the GUID. We talked about how we can auto-generate the GUID. Two methods of it. One was new ID. The other one was sequential ID. And uh, with that, I thank you for listening and learning with me. I hope we have moved a bit forward in our learning. To contact me, write me in YouTube comments or email me to devklearner.com. 
Thank you. Thank you.